I know I should be focusing on on the towel or transfer business, but my head's gone. I, ju- I need to find a way to beat the French. I need to find a way to beat the French. Like I, the Euros are coming up, I'm gonna beat them in it. It's how I get my revenge. It's my redemption arc. It's my destiny. Hello. Hi, Ajat. Uh, it's Callum from the FA calling. Uh, we've had a sit down internally, and mm-hmm. obviously with with everything that's gone on this summer and, and the performance of the team, we've just made the decision to to not want to continue any further Sorry? with you on this. Um, we've no. made the decision, and, and from later today, you'll be relieved of your duties. Um, we've already let the press. The press. Down. So the decision. I don't care. Made. My, I don't do my press um, conferences. Don't call me back on this no, 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 no. Wait, 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 what? Wait, come back. Hello? I guess it's over. I guess it's over. Come on, Jack. Ideas. Ideas. You're good at ideas. You've got to have a plan. How do we get the England job back? Ooh. That, that might work. Hold the... I'll be back. I'll be back. Don't go anywhere. Right. Uh, I, I guess we're giving this a shot. Oh, boy. Please work. Please work. Please work. Hello, you're through to the official helpline of the English Football Association. Please press 1 for Dylan Turnbull booking requests. Oh, I, I could press one. Two for any 1966 World Cup. He does do a inquiries. mean birthday party. Or three for England managerial applications. Okay. I can't believe this is mental. This is mental. Please hold. Oh, but if you're wondering, it's the new iPhone. Yeah, new model. It, it's pretty good, actually. Please state your name. Name, uh, uh, Mr. Work, Miss, Mr. Work. Is that you, Jack? Why are you calling this number? Maybe. Oh. Uh, look, I wanted to be England manager again. I'm going to be honest. I just feel like there's unfinished business, and I can do it for us. Do you not think we'd recognise that you're in disguise? I mean, I thought the disguise was good, but how how do you know I'm wearing a disguise? This is a phone call. Jack, we're the FA. We know everything. Except how to but, run a successful national team. But, but, Don't call us back. Wait. No. I guess international management just isn't for me. Let's start season 16. I, I, I can't be doing this anymore. I can't be doing it. I can't be. I'm wearing a headband for crying out loud. Just roll the episode intro. What is going on, guys? Jack here, and welcome back to episode number 145 of Park to Prem here with Town or Town. Today marks the start of season number 16, and hopefully, this will be our title winning season. That's the aim, you know. We've won everything else. Now I want the Premier League, and then, of course, I want the Club World Cup, and then I want to win them all again. Um, yeah, we're here. It's the start of the year, and to be honest, it's been a bit of a weird pre season. Of course, I've been off in World Cup land with England, having some fun there. It's not entirely gone to plan however um you know we're now back at the club level we're going to be focusing on this and hopefully guiding ourselves towards that elusive premier league title you can see the media currently have us down at fourth place the league as you can see here is full of these teams worth noting coventry our affiliates of just last year got promoted they had back-to-back promotions from league one to the premier league i'm very excited to see what they can do now they are predicted to finish rock bottom i am a little scared for them as I mentioned, our prediction is 4 for more when you look at the media Dream 11. We have two players in the Dream 11, Leskinen and Cancina. And I feel like Cancina 
he is essentially the new best signing that we've made this summer. And I know that's a bit of a weird mindset to have, but of course he was on loan at Juventus last year. Prior to that, he didn't have a work permit. The 19-year-old looks absolutely insane. Expect to make see him make a big splash this year. And to be honest, the transfer window has been a weird one because we've not gone crazy with signings. We've not brought in a whole host of new players, um, despite the fact that £87 million has been spent. We'll talk about that in a second. Um... A lot of this year's budget has simply gone, gone on wages. And the reason it's gone on wages is because our wage budget has shot up and the wage expectations of players have shot up. Um, we are now spending an extra £600,000 a week on wages. That is around £32 million a year. That is not an ins insignificant amount of money. Um, it's going to be interesting to keep an eye on our club balance as this year goes on because... To be honest, prior to this year, prior to this big wage hike, we've consistently been holding, you know, a fairly steady financial situation. I'm sure if you've managed in the Premier League, you have that cycle where you have a load of money and then all the money just bleeds out through the year. Then the TV money comes in again and then the graph starts easing down. Whereas you can see for us, we're sat with £304 million in the bank. Now, some of that is just prize money. However, a lot of it this year has just been in sales where we have made £121 million in sales. And the best thing about all of this is none of the players we've sold are first team players, which is obviously the best part of this all. Um, in truth, you know, there's probably five players here who have made up the bulk of this market and then a load of other players that have left us are simply players who just aren't good enough for the first team and we've just decided to, to sell them while they're still good. I feel like the, the big sale here is actually Son Jung Woo, who I have no idea how we've got £30 million for him from Anderlecht, but I'm very grateful for it. He's not a £30 million player. He's 20. He's got some potential. Maybe he'll turn out to be the world's best centre mid and I'll be living to regret it. But for a player who was at the backup of all backups last year and really had no place in the first team this year, that's insane money. And that kind of trend continues with a few more of these players. Vinko Kosic has gone to Napoli for £28.5 million. Um, just as a reminder, we brought him in on a free. We sold him for £46 million. Last year, we brought him in on a free again. And now we've sold him for £28 million. So we have brought in the same player twice and sold him on for over £60 million. That is, well, it's pretty good business, isn't it? In fact, it's over £70 million, which is absolutely insane to think about, really. Pizarro, another similar player, a player who has a lot of potential, is not a bad player by any means, but ultimately I just didn't see a route for him into the first team. To get £20 million, I feel like, is pretty good money for a player who was undoubtedly overpaid and... Well, being the fact he's, you know, a very good winger and we don't play with wingers, just didn't really make sense to keep hold of. Anyway, another striker has left us, Blaine Neal. You may remember this guy. We signed him up for the price of a laptop from Plunkett many years ago. And, uh, well, we have now sold him on three or four years later for £17.5 million. That is a 30,000 times profit, I believe, on that sale. And that's that's pre that's pretty good if you ask me. Um, yeah, he's gone for seventeen million pounds. He's gone to Brentford, who were newly promoted to the Premier League. I just feel like with his finishing, composure, off the ball, he's just not very good at anything and quite athletic. And don't get me wrong, I'm sure he'll get goals for Brentford, but for a team of our calibre, he's never going to feature in the first team. And seventeen million pounds is insane money to get for him. Anyway, the last of the big sales, Christian Castro has gone to Boca. Another one of these young centre mids who I just don't feel like he's quite going to make the grade. So rather than wait until he's 23 or 24 and, you know, he's not got any potential left to fulfil and perhaps teams aren't so interested, just decided to sell him whilst he's still a bit of a hot property. You can see he made two appearances for us last year. We brought him in for £2 million. One year later... We've sold him on for 13.5 million. That is good business again. And that's obviously how we are going to have to operate here at Tower Especially with the wage budget going up, players have to come in and they have to be sold on for profit. And that is how we will make a, you know, a stable source of income. Danny Swan, the last of the big sales that I will cover. The reason I'll cover him is because once upon a time, he was a big hot prospect for us. Came through our academy five years ago. Hasn't really ever found his feet. I'm sure he could be a very good championship, potentially even lower end Premier League player. He's never going to be good enough for us. We got £3.9 million for him, which for a player who we produced at our academy is obviously just a good sign of the money making that can be made through selling on the players who don't quite make the grade for us. Anyway, I talked about Cancina being the big signing of the year and the fact that he was going to be the big player to keep an eye out for. And that might seem a little bit weird because you'd look here and see that I've spent £87 million, but so much of this is just future-proofing. Um, one thing that I want to do, and this is purely like a personal thing, is I want to have more English players in the English 
towel or town side. You know, it might sound weird, but to me, it feels almost a little hollow to win the Premier League with no English players in the starting eleven. And whilst we do have five in the first team, it's something that is very difficult to solve because English players at English clubs just have naturally higher asking prices. It's just that the inflated value that they have. So as a result, I've had to go and spend a lot of money on some young English players that I probably massively overpaid, but because I was so happy with the first team, I was kind of happy to overpay for them. And I think if one or two of them turn out to be world-class, we're, you know, off to a flyer. Anyway, Geffen Collins is the first of these. 16 years old. He has only just turned 16. Very, very good player. English youngster. Hasn't made an appearance yet for the, like, international setup, which is a bit of a surprise. He was a product of Norwich City's academy, an academy that does, you know, produce some very good players. Great first touch, great flair. If his passing and vision can get a little bit better i'm thinking the the andre treatment uh, he's going to be an absolutely insane advanced playmaker and at 16 years old loads of potential and his current ability is very 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 good indeed anyway another player who's a little older but plays a similar center mid position is alex boyo a bit of a weird one this guy because his vision is atrocious and that is the one gap in his game but at 17 years old he looks extremely good um, really, really good mentors for a player of his age. 17 years young, signed from Birmingham City for £15 million. I've had my eye on him for a little while. Um, he's one of these players who has absolutely insane potential. Hopefully, he is going to realise that at the club here. Anyway, the next signing we have, £13.5 million spent not on an Englishman, but on a Spaniard. Vincente Lara has joined from Levante, although he's immediately gone back on loan to them. This guy has only just turned 18 this summer, but last year, um, you can see he's played a load of games in La Liga, actually, over the last couple of years, and at uh, you know, youth level for Levante. He will be their nailed-on starting goalkeeper at the age of 18. He's got fantastic personality. His goalkeeping technicals are really solid across the board. I guess you could argue his throwing could do with being a little bit better but I need a long-term goalkeeping solution I feel like he could follow in the shadows and in the footsteps of Morrigan to become a Spanish wall in goal for us and I'm very excited to see how he gets on because when you look at him at a glance for a player who is only 18 years old who is going to be getting regular first team football and does undoubtedly have potential there's just there's a lot to like. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say on Lara. Um, he's he's good. He's good. But one one for the future. And I guess that is kind of the trend here. You know, all these players, I know you're probably looking at them going, these are underwhelming. It's all about the future. And it's a similar story with the next couple. Fraser Parker has joined from Aston Villa. He's a versatile centre mid who can also play right back. I am actually thinking about training him to play complete wing back. I feel like this is a role that could really suit his game. Um, he does have a few gaps in his game. He's off the ball and pace could just have been a tiny bit better. But for a player who's only just turned 16 years old and has a lot of potential, I just feel like it's a great value proposition. Ultimately, you know, an English 20-something-year-old who is playing in a Premier League club, but even at a low-end Premier League level, is probably going to be worth more than £13.5 million. I think back to, was it Pittman, the left-back that we had once upon a time that we sold for £12 million? I'm thinking that these kind of players, at the very worst, are going to end up like that. Hopefully a few of them are going to break into the first team. Anyway, a couple more English players we'll talk about real quick. Shigari has joined us from West Ham. A similar player in some ways to the previous chap. Really, really well-rounded. Sevens and eights across the board in his technicals. In fact, when you look at it, it's a bit freakish how consistent they are. Um, his mentals are good, though. He's not the most physically kind of agile, I suppose could do with being a little bit quicker, a little bit stronger. But make no mistake, he's got a great personality. He's 17 years old, brought in for not a, a small amount by any means. That is really important to remember. Like We are spending quite a lot of money on these youngsters, but it's just that long-term investment. And it's a similar story with Adam Kerr here, perhaps the weakest of the bunch, which is kind of explained by the fact we're not paying him so much. But 16 years old, has only just turned 16, signed from Leicester. Good technicals, good mentals. Let's see if he can develop. And it's tricky, right? Because I know some people are going to look at that and go, you've spent all your transfer budget on youngsters. And it's absolutely right, I have. But the issue I've got is that I'm so happy with the balance of the first team. There's a few new youngsters being promoted up through our ranks. There wasn't really a position I could look at and go, we need to solve that. So I decided to invest in some young players. And also a lot of our transfer budget just went into pumping up the wage budget by £600,000 at the end of the day. A few more youngsters who have joined us who have a lot of potential. Pavlovic has joined us. He is a Serbian forward, 18 years old, perfectionist personality. Has already played for the international team. And uh, I really, really like the look of this guy. He doesn't have too many gaps in his game. He will be fifth a choice striker, I think, this year for us if we can get a loan move for Bubble O'Dun. But when you look at him, 
just very, very exciting. And he has been signed for a tiny fee. Valued at 15 million. We paid, drum roll please, 3.7 million. I think that's some good business. There's a load of other youngsters who have joined us here. I guess Billis is worth talking about. We agreed to sign him when he was 15 years old. We've loaned him now to Ipswich Town. Hopefully regular first-team football is going to help his development. Signed for 3.6 million. He looks pretty good, if you ask me. I think he could be a really, really good advanced playmaker down the line. So yeah, I know not everyone's going to be a fan of that transfer business, but I just wanted to get in some young English players, and the sad reality is that with English youngsters you have to pay, and these were the few players who, when I went to try and sign them, I wasn't told that I needed to pay £100 million for them. I'm sure you can all relate to that. So in terms of the team and how I see us lining up this year, I am going to be sticking with this system, the system that we played for the last few years. However, as a plan B, I am weighing up the possibility of going back to playing our 4-2-4 against weaker opposition. It's a formation that, you know, sees us get a lot of goals. We saw it with England. And I feel like in games where we really outclass opposition, it could be a pretty smart move to go to. In terms of the squad, um, Markovsky, I wanted to start this year at centre-back. I really wanted to give him a chance. Unfortunately, he's pulled a back muscle, but do expect to see him playing over Jackie Auger at the back. Um, there's a few other youngsters who have been promoted through the ranks, a few French lads, in fact. We've got here Matteo Legal, who, of course, plays for us, the lawyers. I mean, that's it's fantastic, isn't it? We should call him the judge, really. He's 18 years old, really, really good centre mid. I am currently weighing up the opportunity to loan him out to Villarreal because I do think that would be a really good loan for him. But equally, I wouldn't mind him just as a little bit of squad depth and to perhaps give him games here and there. The thing I'm really weighing up is, do I want to you know, have him here as a backup or do I want him to go to Villarreal where I've been told he would be an important player? That is... The dilemma, you know, which is going to be better for his development. Another young Frenchman, this time a guy who's come through the academy, Sammy Fennell. Uh, I really like this guy, naturally a centre mid. We've been training him at left wing back for a little while. Um, lots of potential. I've gone training with the first team. Will he break into, you know, playing semi-regularly for the first team? I think it's unlikely this year, but my thinking is bring him into the first team, have him train with the main squad, but just make him available for the under-23s. And that's a similar story with players like Pavlovic, who we talked about signing. I think he's good enough that if we needed him to, he could do a role in the first team. But ultimately, I do see his kind of future this year, at least, being, you know, playing for the under-23s, but training with the first team. On the whole, though, the team hasn't changed that much, and the reason it's not changed that much is because I really didn't feel a need to. I talked about the wage hikes and the fact the wage budget has been going up and up and up. Um, you will note here there are a lot of players on over £100,000, which was, simply wasn't the case previously. The good news is Shvets of Andre, Morrigan, Soretta and Aurelio, who I would have considered some of the most important te players to the way this team plays, all signed new deals. Aurelio did ask for £215,000 a week, which hurt a little... I kept having to remind myself, he got 20 assists this year, uh, or rather last year, in all competitions. For a right back, that is absolutely insane, and so he probably justifies that big payday, especially because I did want to get rid of the release clause in his deal. Anyway, in terms of pre-season, I know someone is going to ask, Jack, how did you get on against Brandon? We beat them 28-0. Uh, Kansina got eight, Shvetsov got seven, and I tweeted out the full details. Morrigan didn't touch the ball all game, it was a little insane. Um, you can see the other games here. We had a pre-season tour in South Korea, which was absolutely lovely. And well, that sets us all up here for the start of the season, which I've not acknowledged yet. It's the FA Community Shield, everyone. We are taking on Manchester City, a chance for silverware early on. And next episode, we've got Stuttgart in the UEFA Super Cup. I mean, it's all action. It's all like cup finals to begin. Can we start the, the historic quadruple or quintuple? I don't know. Do these competitions count for anything? In my heart, they do, but I know they're not real. I don't want to say they're not real competitions. You have to qualify for them. They're not quite of the same prestige, though, are they? So anyway, Cancina, the only change from last year's squad, really. Um, Turnbull is going to start on the bench, although between him and Norman, expect to see some rotation in the striking department. Markovsky is unavailable. Andre picked up a little injury. I'm not going to risk him. He has had a very, very intense summer with Brazil, which if you were wondering, how did Brazil get on Jack in the World Cup? They won the final after extra time against Portugal. And in this game, Soretta, Andre... Um, even GCL, our former man, played, as did Andy Eric. So really good to see, um, you know, the, the Brazil national team flourishing. And of course, when we've got so much representation in that squad, it makes me feel pretty good about our team on the whole. 
But anyway, let's get into today's game, shall we? It's the FA Community Shield. We are going to put back that international bottling to the back of our minds as we go into today's game. Makassi coming in for the injured and um, Andre, the rest of the team, pretty much at full strength. So excited to see what we can achieve here. And worth noting, it's the debut of new 3D kits this year. There will be no more kit clashes, I hope. Um, so yeah, get get used to it. We we have a slightly different kit. It's a bit darker at the top. It matches the 2D kit that we introduced last year. And well, early on, throw in. I mean, welcome to the club, Cancina. I know some people are asking Jack, where are you going to play Cancina this year? He's been playing as a striker at Juventus. He's been playing as a striker for the Argentine national team. I think he might be a striker. Everyone. I mean, what a volley that is! The immense technique, the hunger as well to get to the near post. And against Manchester City, who pipped us to the title last year. Who almost knocked us out in the Champions League last year. We are now a goal up. And of course, the big thing here really is we have such a young squad. We are only going to get better, hopefully. And well, let's see if we can continue to get better. Andy Eric scores. Aurelio has two assists already this year. I mean, he's already justifying that £200,000 uh, wage a week, isn't he? Had such a slow year the year before last. Last year put in an incredible set of performances. Earned that new contract and now he's got to justify that contract. And I'll tell you what, if the first 10 minutes of this season are anything to go by, he's going to justify it very comfortably. Although they have a chance here. Jackie Oje heads it clear to Cancina with his yellow boot. I've never seen Cancina in the 3D match engine before. He's got lovely yellow boots, bless him. And well, speaking of the devil, here he is playing as the complete forward. Lays it to Andrei Shvetsov. Who takes it wide. Can he finish it? No. What a great run it was as well. Did really well actually to pull away from the defender. But couldn't quite get it. Goalwards. Anyway, we've got a chance here. Matasevic. To Leskin and Makassi. Cancina again. Mateus Aurelio through. Should score. Shot is blocked and he can't quite pull it back. It goes out for a, a goal kick. But Mateus Aurelio and Cancina. They, the whole show seems to be run through them right now. Andy Eric actually got the highest average rating in the team with an 8.0. But in the first 20 minutes, could you have asked for a better start against Man City? I don't know if you could have done. Anyway, we've got Nico out on the left-hand side to Andy Eric. Great touch. Whips it about post. Hits the woodwork. We can't get the rebound in. But that was Jackie Oje at the back post with the header. Anytime there's like a tall player at the back post who headers the ball goalwards, I just assume it's Jackie Oje because we do send, send him forward for set pieces because he is just very good at finding himself in the right place at the right time for goals. And, well, Makassi, Roger, what are you doing, mate? You missed the end of last year for your injury. Now you've given away a penalty. Of course, only playing because Andre's injured. Can Morrigan bail us out? Penalty here in the Champions League final, and, well, he can't. A 35-year-old Kylian Mbappe does score. I did at one point consider signing Kylian Mbappe this year. I was going to have to pay him over £200,000 a week and a load of insane bonuses. And then my Discord chat talked me out of it. They were like, Jack, what are you doing? To me, it was more of a status symbol thing. But what, what I've learned in recent episodes is people don't like it if I don't play the game seriously. Um, I feel like it's worth talking about, to be fair. Last episode, obviously, against France, it, it wasn't the best of games, was it? Let's be honest. However, there were a lot of people who I feel like were a little... I don't want to say were disrespectful, but just a bit rude in the comments. Like, I, I know that I made bad mistakes, but there were some people who were just... And they took it a little far. So I'm glad that most people weren't like that. And most people seem to appreciate it and enjoy it for what it was, which was a bit of fun. But I didn't realise how many people felt like Football Manager has to be played seriously. Anyway, Shvetsov offside there. Makassi had a chance to get an assist, get a bit of redemption. Shvetsov's missed time run means he isn't going to get any of that. Andre whipping it in, cleared away. I've noticed they've got a few players on bookings. Nico forward to Leskinen. Now with Makassi, Soretta, nice build-up play here. Radio tries to nod it down, not the best of headers. And now Frost is through. I mean, this is a problem because he's very good. Yeah, and, but unfortunately, when you see Mike Frost through on goal like that, you kind of just accept that it's going in. <laughs> um, it's 2-2 here. Um, we've, not, we've not been the, a, a worse team, but of course, Man City have insane quality, so it's never going to be easy. I wanted to go into this cup final and kind of take the game to them. It's worked early on, but they have slowly got into this game. I mean, two mindsets here. Do I want to go to the more defensive system? Do I want to go to the more defensive system because, you know, they're on the attack? Or do I want to try the 4-2-4? Four, four? 
And part of me really does want to try this 4-2-4, I'm going to be honest. I think we're going to do it. I think we're going to do it. In terms of the changes, so we're going to bring in Turnbull up front. So Cancina moves out onto left inverted winger. And then Steve Norman is going to play right inverted winger, which might seem odd, but he's left-footed. He can definitely play as an inverted winger as well. You can see here, his long shot's perhaps the only thing that's really lacking. And this is a really efficient system change. That allows us to have some incredible firepower in the final third on the pitch. Of course, this is the system that we used uh, for England. It worked well there, besides in that one game against France. But I'm interested to see how it fares against one of the big boys like Man City. So we'll make the tactical change. Hopefully they are not going to score in the meantime. As Jackie Ogier commits a bit of a cynical foul there for a yellow card. But we're bringing on the reinforcements while we've got a set piece here. Leskin and whipping it forward. Now with Frost, who is going to look to break away. Man City breaking with pace. I mean, Mike Frost, just foul him. Just, he's, he's so good, it's not fair. It's actually not fair. I just want to remind you of how good this guy is. It's not fair. He's like a cheat code. Oh, that's so... It's not even a case of we've overcommitted men forward or anything like that. It's just the fact they've got the world's best footballer and he's just quicker than all my players and very, very good. He picks up the ball just outside his own 18-yard box and he runs the length of the pitch and tucks it in like that. Set piece maybe for us here. Mateus Aurelio to Shvetsov. Aurelio whipping it in. Turnbull's lurking under it. Falls to Shvetsov. His cross is blocked. Cuthbert now with it. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this game as a chance to experiment because I want to see how well this system can do against, you know, a team like Man City. There is a ch chance it just doesn't work. But the, ultimately, when we play against Man City in the league or any other cup competition, I'm going to be absolutely wanting and 100% needing to win. Whereas in this game, it's not it's quite as important. As Norman pulls it across to Andy Eric, who hits it. I mean, for a second, I thought it was flying in. I was starting to believe... Maybe you guys were too. That's gone just wide of the mark. 20 minutes left. Man City still just the one goal up. A throw in now in their own half. Falmir with it. Going to try and force a turnover of possession. They're forced to go long and Jackie Ogier reads it, gives it to Leskin. And now with Norman, Schwetz off, off to his right. Andy Eric inside. Lovely build-up play. Lovely. Oh, if Turnbull scores that. It's such a nice goal as well. The passing was crisp. It was pat pacey, and now we have to be wary of the breakaway. They're bringing it forward. Mbappe down this right-hand side, whipping it in. Kai Havertz to Walker. Tackle goes in. I mean, what a huge tackle that is. I think that was Aurelio with it. Man City are quite good. There's a reason that we're predicted to finish fourth in the Premier League, and they're predicted to probably finish first or second behind Chelsea, if I had to hazard a guess. Frost just... Running rings around us again. Gets the ball, dribbles it wide, puts a cross in. Lovely block, to be fair. He keeps it in somehow, but it falls to Consina. Go on, you little Argentine. You little drunken mistake. I signed him whilst drunk, if you don't know. that. That's the story. I feel like I need to clarify that now. He's hit it straight at the keeper. <laughs> Are we really going to start calling Consina my little drunken mistake? <laughs> don't feel like it's the best of names. I mean, since we've changed the system, right, we've steadied the ship. Because they were definitely in the ascendancy, Man City. And whilst they have had a few chances, we've had chances too. Four minutes left. Could we have that one last opportunity? Morrigan with it to Jackie Ogier. Leskinen. Really nice play, actually, with this system. Ball over to Consina. Breaking away. Cutting inside. Where is the keeper? I mean, his positioning was awful. Consina's finish was just as terrible. We'll be interesting to see this year how Consina gets on because he is more often than not going to play as a striker, but there is definitely scope for him to play as an inverted winger out on the left. That is something that will be required of him, especially if I do decide that I want to play this 4-2-4 system against lesser opposition. Anyway, we're putting pressure high up the pitch, but they've managed to work it out quite nicely. It's now with Cuthbert on this far side. Plays it across to Karabali. Now with Valmir, who spreads it across to Kylian Mbappe. That kid who's quite good. Whipping it in, Frost heads over. I mean, he wants his hat trick. He's not going to get it just yet. There is three minutes left. I was about to go very attacking, and then a highlight started. I'm still going to go very attacking, but if the chance goes in, we're going to switch things up. And, well, they're on the break here. Karabali bringing it forward. 
crosses it in. I mean, I think that was a cross. It caught the keeper out for sure. We've dealt with it. Could we now break? No. The highlight was the question, was it over the line? The answer is, it was not over the line. And well, it's a disappointing result ultimately against Man City. I feel like we are going to be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them throughout this year against Zidane's men. But I'm not going to overly dwell on it. I feel like it's disappointing. That penalty really let them back into the game. We went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Ultimately, the match was decided by the fact they have the world's best footballer. And he's, he's, he's quite good, as it turns out, unfortunately for us. Anyway, in terms of where that leaves us going into the year, the transfer window isn't closed yet. I am currently sat, if we just have a quick peek, with £62 million in the bank, but I can't increase the wage budget anymore, and we're already spending over the wage budget. Um, I wish I could, you know, push it more, you know, into the wages, but that doesn't seem like it's an option right now. The reason for doing that is there's still a few players like Turnbull who want new contracts, and ideally I'll get them locked into longer-term deals, even if it does mean just paying them that little bit more. Um, there's no major urgency about it, but just for peace of mind, uh, especially whilst there's a big wage differential between a player like Shvetsov and a not dissimilar player like Turnbull, the player who's on almost a third of the, the amount is always going to come and keep asking for more money. So that's kind of the, the problem to navigate for now, I suppose, going into the new year. Anyway, Consina showed some glimpses of promise, and I feel like it was a pretty good game on the whole, even if we didn't come away with a result. It was interesting to see the 4-2-4 in action. Um, I do think we will use that from time to time. I feel like it will help get a lot out of Consina, although, as we saw from the early stages of that game, he can definitely do a job at striker for us this year. Anyway, I'd be interested to know what you think of our transfer business. I think a lot of it is long-term strategy, but with... I don't know, with our squad as young as it is right now, it just I didn't feel like there was any position I could immediately improve. I think if I was going to look anywhere, it would probably be the centre mid position, looking for a new partner in crime for Andre. But I wanted to make more of a priority of just ensuring the players at the club were getting paid what they wanted, um, you know, for overall happiness and morale, um, you know, rather than looking to spend the big bucks on a player who may or may not make a difference at the end of the day. So anyway, folks, that's going to wrap up everything from me today. I hope to see you next time out where we will probably do the Stuttgart game. Maybe we will bundle it in with a league game against Brentford or Watford for good measure. Could be interesting to see how our 4-2-4 gets on against one of the weaker teams in the league. But until then, I hope you enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I hope you enjoyed the intro to today's episode. I will catch you on the next one. It is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.